In all programming languages that support object-oriented features, there's a concept known as inheritance. Inheritance is when an object inherits all the properties and methods of its parent object in order to become a specialized version of the parent object. So in JavaScript, we use the prototype property to establish subclasses that will inherit the characteristics of our main parent classes. It's very easy to do, man. So this results in a specialized subclass that can retain its own properties and methods as well as inherit all of the properties and methods of the parent class. Let's open our code editors and write an example now that will shine a light on this concept well. First, create a test.html document. Then let's put a script element in place. Now let's write ourselves a comment here to establish a parent class. So let's type in function parent class. Now we can establish properties and methods within this class. So we'll say this dot parent underscore property one is equal to the string of hola. Now let's say this dot parent method one is equal to function parent method one open close parentheses open in curly brace and put in the closing curly brace and in between the parentheses we'll scoop up any dynamic arguments being sent into this method as argument one if you wanted to have multiple like we said before you just put argument two argument three however many you want to take into this method then as return data for this method we're going to type in return arg one and we'll concatenate that into a string adding parent method one return data to any dynamic arguments coming in. And you'll see the dynamic argument I'm gonna send into this function or into this method in a moment. Now let's place another comment in that says establish a child class. And what I'm gonna do is just copy the whole parent class and establish the child class using that as a sort of template. And I'll just change where it says parent to child and everywhere where it says parent, I'll change to child. I'll change where it says hola for child property one to adios. So now we have child class and inside of child class it has child property one with a value of adios and child method one which is set to intake one dynamic argument and then return that dynamic argument concatenated with a string of child method one return data. Okay, very simple. Now we have to make the child class inherit all of the parent class characteristics using the prototype property. So let's go down one line and place a comment to ourselves again. It says make the child class inherit all the parent class characteristics by using the prototype property explained in depth in this YouTube video tutorial, which was the one right before this video tutorial where we talked about the prototype property more in depth. So now we're gonna make this child class inherit all the properties and methods, this method and this property from the parent class. So we target the child class dot prototype property and we make that equal to new parent class. That allows the child class to inherit all of the properties and methods of the parent class. So now let's create a new instance of the child class. So we say var instance one is equal to new child class. Now we're going to put in some code that checks to see if instance one is an instance of both objects, the parent class and the child class. So we alert instance one instance of parent class and instance one instance of child class. And these will return true or false according to whether or not instance one is actually an instance of parent class and the child class. So now let's run this in our favorite browser and see what we get. True and true. That means instance one that we just created here, that is a new child class instance, is both an instance of child class and parent class. That means it can access all the properties and methods of both classes. And in normal situations, it wouldn't be able to. But we made it inherit all of the characteristics of the parent class using the prototype property here. Okay, now let's go ahead and comment those out. Now the next line down, I'm gonna put a comment that says access the instance methods and properties. Now to be sure we can actually access all methods and properties within both classes with this instance one, we have to write some code that does that. So let's alert instance one dot parent method, which is the one up here in the parent class and the dynamic argument that we're sending in to the parent method 
is this string of result and a semicolon and space. So if the child class, in fact, did inherit all of the characteristics of the parent class, we should be able to target the methods and properties of the parent class directly through the instance of the child class. So that's what we just did here. We're targeting the parent1 method using an instance of a child class that does not have the parent1 method within it. Okay, so let's see what we get now. Run that in your favorite browser. So we say result parent method one return data. Okay, so that lets you know for sure that instance one, which is a new child class instance, in fact did inherit all of the methods and properties from the parent class because we told it to using the prototype property here in this line. So now we can take that same line, that same alert, and show you how we can just access the the child method so we should get parent method one return data and child method one return data so you get result parent method one return data and then result child method one return data so you can see that the child class has access to both parent method one and child method one now let's also alert ourselves the parent property one and child property one of instance one you can see parent property one's up here and child property one is here in the child class. Parent property one is in the parent class. So run that in your favorite browser and you get both results from the child and parent method one and then hola and adios. That means instance one of child class is able to access all the properties and methods within both classes in the script because we made child class inherit all the properties of the parent class. Okay, so now before we end this little tutorial, I'm going to add one more little piece of code that shows you how to override parent method one in the child class. So basically we're going to use the prototype property again to add a parent method one into the child class, which will override the parent method one in the parent class. You can see how we're returning different data. I have overridden parent method one and then we're going to alert ourselves the same alert that we used right here and you'll see how we have different results now because parent method one will have been overridden at that point so we get result parent method one return data child method one return data hola adios and then result I have overridden parent method one so everything works as expected. Now you can see how the child class inherited all of the properties and methods of the parent class by assigning it to using the prototype property. That means any instances of the child class that are brought into the script will have access to all the properties and methods within both classes or both objects. Okay? So you see how that works? It's not a very difficult concept to wrap your head around. And you really only have to assign new uh, methods and properties through prototype here when you want to overwrite the functionality of anything that happens to be in the parent class. And just an extra side note, if you were to name both of these property1 and property1 here, you would get a slight conflict in data handling because this child class is told to inherit all the properties of the parent class. So you have to make sure that if you're going to use inheritance, that you use separate names, unless you want the child class property to overwrite the parent class property. Okay, that was the last concept that I will document on video regarding JavaScript object-oriented programming features. We covered the key concepts of JavaScript OOP in this and the previous two videos. So in these three videos, we already covered the key concepts of JavaScript object-oriented programming. And actually, if you want to think about it in a broader sense, the concepts of all object-oriented programming in all languages that have object-oriented features. Now, more terminology and examples on this topic authored by me will show up in text page format added to my JavaScript code library at my site. And you can all go there and view all of my code libraries free that are text-based there. I've been adding a lot of modern information in text format there in the code reference libraries. So as all of these technologies evolve, I will keep updating and adding to my text-based libraries there. So don't miss that important 
constantly evolving feature of developphp.com. And soon I'll be completely revamping the PHP code library and I'll reapply the MySQL code library with all the new updated code examples from MySQLi. Now in some other unrelated news, the live on-air Google Hangout we had scheduled for last Wednesday got snafu'd by Google because we were trying to broadcast directly during the time that Google changed the whole layout of Google Plus and the way that the on-air Hangouts worked. And it was during the commencement of the Google I.O. developer stuff. So basically, Google didn't allow our Hangout to go on-air. We tried like 5,000 times. So we're rescheduling the on-air Hangout for next Wednesday, May 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And that's two days away. So I'm going to try my best to keep a regular weekly Wednesday 2 p.m. Eastern Time on-air Hangout going to cover different hot topics each week. So Hangouts on Air will be a weekly Wednesday 2 p.m. Eastern Time feature on my channel from now on. And I'll try to stick to that schedule the best I can. So get at me on the social networks to find yourself placed in a Hangout with us if you got nerdy skills, kid. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.